morning students so myself a musician here from dc department civil engineering college today are going to discuss about the convolution and correlation the introduction part of the convolution and correlation and we already seen the convolution derivation part and the theorems i can see the one example sir find the convolution of the signal x1 of t is equal to e power minus e t mu of t and x2 of t is equal to e power minus b t mu of t using the fourier transpose using the fourier transpose so we know x1 of t is equal to given e power minus e t mu of t means 1 by a plus c of t x2 of t is a e power minus uh, b t into mu of t the b 1 by b plus c of t using this relation the fourier transformation convolution x1 of t with the convolution of x2 of t is a product of uh, frequency and uh, inverse fourier transformation you can apply you get the convolution of the term okay so we got the x1 of omega and x2 of omega and apply the inverse fourier transformation to get x1 of t with the convolution of x2 of t because they are asking uh, using the fourier transformation they have to find out so first of all you get the time function 1 by a plus z omega and 1 by b plus z omega so 1 by a plus z omega and 1 by b plus z omega because the convolution time domain the frequency is a product so multiply the two functions and 1 by a plus z omega and 1 by b plus z omega take as uh, the two factors uh, to find out uh, a and the b values by taking a partial differentiation expansion method a plus g omega a plus g omega and b by b plus g omega So this is for the x one of t with the convolution of uh, x two of t is equal to. Okay. Now you can take the function one is equal to a into b plus g omega plus b into a plus g omega a plus g omega. Uh, compare the coefficients here z omega coefficients and the constant values if it is a constant uh, a into b plus b into a is equal to 1 and z omega coefficients are so 0 is equal to a plus b means a is equal to minus b a is equal to minus b or b is equal to minus a in that equation you can substitute one is equal to a into b substitute the b as uh, a value minus uh, a into a so a you can take the common b minus a is equal to 1 a is equal to 1 by b minus a 1 by b minus a and the b is equal to So a is equal to the same the minus only the minus b minus e. So the x one of t with the convolution of x two of t. After applying the partial differentiation expansion method here, a got the one by b minus e and the b got a minus one by b minus e. Take the b minus e is a common term as a is one. A plus G omega, A plus G omega minus one by B plus G omega. Okay, 
that is equal to this is for the inverse Fourier transformation of the function 1 by b minus a into so what is a 1 by a plus j omega e power minus a t mu of t minus e power minus b t into mu of t okay my dear friends now using the Fourier transformation the convolution of uh, the time domain function x1 of t and x2 of t we got uh, 1 by b minus a into e power minus a t minus e power minus b t into mu of what is my see here the 1 by b minus a e power minus a t mu of t minus e power minus b t into mu of t and second example is given here it is also using the Fourier transformation only we have to find out one is uh, the 2 into e power minus t 2t mu of t and x2 of t is a mu of t see x1 of t is given x1 of t is given as a 2 into e power minus 2t mu of t it's a Fourier transformation is x1 of omega is equal to 2 into 1 by 2 plus j omega okay and second one is given the x2 of t is equal to mu of t then x1 of x2 of omega is equal to mu of t the Fourier transformation is uh, pi into delta of omega plus 1 by j omega is a Fourier transformation now you can apply the multiply the two functions 2 by 2 plus j omega multiplied with uh, because x1 of omega into x2 of omega the pi into delta of omega plus 1 by j omega 1 by j omega what it matters now you can multiply the 2 into pi delta omega by the 2 plus uh, j omega and 2 by j omega into 2 plus j omega by using the partial fraction expansion method multiply the 2 pi delta omega by 2 plus uh, j omega plus 2 into 2 plus j omega into j omega okay now find the factors here a and b for these two functions a we got the one and the b is equal to minus one by taking here or otherwise uh, directly you can find out the two is equal to a by the something means a into j omega plus b into 2 plus j omega okay you can take only the coefficients uh, constant the b the a there is no any constant value is a b only b is get cancelled as a b is equal to 1 compare the coefficients here a j, j omega coefficients so 0 is equal to a plus b a is equal to minus b nothing but is a minus 1 a is equal to minus 1 and the b is equal to 1 so if i take that value is a by something a by 2 by j omega and 1 by j omega you can write as plus a is minus 1 by 2 plus j omega and here the term another term is there the plus 2 pi into delta omega by 2 plus j omega okay 2 plus j omega this is for the inverse Fourier transformation inverse Fourier transformation of this total function okay now you can observe here we got the same thing 1 by j omega minus 1 by j omega plus 2 and this one since the delta omega is equal to 1 for omega is equal to 0 and delta omega is equal to 0 for omega is not equal to 0 not equal to 0 therefore 
2 pi into delta of omega delta of omega becomes uh, the value is uh, j omega is equal to 0 when when the omega is equal to 0 the delta of omega is equal to 1 2 pi into delta of omega by j omega plus 2 when omega is equal to 0 the delta of omega is equal to 1 and omega is not equal to 0 delta of omega is equal to 0 means we have only one value will get remaining all the zeros on now i'm substituting omega is equal to 0 in the denominator it becomes of 2 pi delta of omega pi 0 plus 2 the 2 to get cancelled the pi into delta of omega only becomes so finally we got the 1 pi j omega minus 1 pi j omega plus 2 plus this total function becomes that omega is equal to 0 the pi into delta omega pi into delta omega got it my students so pi delta omega plus 1 pi j omega minus 1 pi j omega plus 2 so pi delta omega 1 plus j omega the inverse Fourier transformation is mu of t minus this total function is e power minus 2t mu of t okay the x1 of t with the convolution of x2 of t is equal to mu of t minus e power minus 2t mu of t okay The next topic is uh, correlation. Until now, we discussed about the convolution of it, the signal comparison or the correlation of the functions. The correlation, there is a two types of the correlations we have, the crass correlation and the autocorrelation. What is the crass correlation and what is the autocorrelation before going to know the cross correlation and the correlation you have to know what is the correlation first of all the concept of correlation the signals may be compared on the basis of similarity of waveforms quantitatively a comparison may be based upon the amount of component of one waveform contained in the other waveform the amount of component of one waveform contained in other waveform if x1 of t and x2 of t are two waveforms, then the waveform x1 of t contains an amount of c12 of x2 of t of that particular waveform. x2 of t is in the interval t1 to t2, where see why are they showing here? We know the orthogonality function. What is the orthogonality? c is equal to orthogonality of signals c is equal to integral t1 to t2 or minus infinite infinite x1 of t x2 of t dt all divided by the integral t1 to t2 x square or x2 whatever in these uh, two functions you can take any one of the function x2 square of t dt Okay, this orthogonality function and c is equal to when the c is equal to zero, the numerator becomes zero. So, if any signals are given, the two signals are you can say that this, those are orthogonal. The integral t1 to t2 x1 of t x2 of t dt is equal to zero, you can prove then the c is equal to zero. Okay, the magnitude of the interval in the numerator might be taken as an indication of uh, similarities. Once again, you can see my difference. The magnitude of the interval in the numerator might be taken as an indication of the similarity. If this integral vanishes, integral t1 to t2 x1 of t, x2 of t dt is equal to zero, then the two signals have no similarity over the interval t1 to t2. There is no similarities over the interval t1 and t2 to t2. Such signals are said to be orthogonal over the specified interval. 
when this uh, numerated term is the similarity is indication you can take the magnitude of the interval in the magnitude numerator might be taken as indication of the similarity if it is a zero there is no any similarities between the two signals uh, in the interval t1 to t2 that such signals we call it as a orthogonal signal we know that the integral t1 to t2 x1 of t x2 of t d to forms the basis of comparison of two signals say x1 and x2 for interval t1 to t2 in general we interested in comparison of two signals for the interval minus infinite to infinite so the test integral becomes a integral minus infinite to infinite x1 of t x2 of t d okay how far it is a similarity means uh, there is a one signal is a normal signal another signal we can take as a shifted version of the signal okay both the signal the total numerator becomes a zero there is no any similarities between the two signals when there is a similarity between the two signals and we can call it as a correlation means uh, however there is an difficulty with the test integral which can be illustrated with the example of the radar pulse we have this one and from the figures from the figures uh, shows a transmitted pulse and a received pulse which is delayed with respect to the transmission pulse with the t seconds transmitted pulse at the x1 of t let us say so and x2 of t is a received signal and transmitted pulse with the ts obviously the two waveforms are identical except that one is a delayed with respect to the other both the signals are the same but there is a delay is there at that test integral integral minus infinite infinite x1 of t x2 of t yields zero because the product x1 and x2 is zero everywhere this indicates that the two waveforms have no measures of similarity with obviously a wrong conclusion and in order to search for a signal signal comparison when when or you can take the x1 of t and x2 of t a change the integral value as the similarities between the two waveforms we must shift one waveform with respect to the other but by the other with the other by various amounts see therefore the test integral is modified as integral minus infinite infinite x1 and you can take the x2 is a delayed version x2 of t minus tau tau samples is delayed where the tau is a searching of our scanning parameter the integral is a function of uh, tau this integral is known as a cross correlation function cross correlation function between x1 of t x2 of t and it is denoted with uh, r12 of tau so the r12 of tau is equal to integral minus infinity infinity uh, here i wrote the t minus tau and here i wrote that t plus tau whatever it is the delayed function or advanced function of any of the signal x1 or x2 both the resultant value is the same in the convolution not not the convolution sorry correlation let us take r12 of tau is equal to i am saying that is a minus infinity infinity x1 of t x2 of t minus tau beta not the beta dt on okay and r12 of tau is also equal to integral minus infinite to infinite take any one of the signal is advanced function x1 of t plus tau x2 of t into dt But don't take the both the delayed versions. Got it, my dear students? Either you can keep x1 on the x2, or otherwise you can change the integral minus infinity infinity x1 of t minus tau and x2 of dt also. 
and the integral minus infinite infinite x1 of t if that it is a x2 is advanced function t plus tau d all the resultant value is the same okay my dear students there is a correlation of two functions or the signals or the wave forms is a measure of similarity between those signals the correlation of two types cross correlation and auto correlation the auto correlation cross correlation are defined separately for energy signals and the power signals energy signals are periodic and power signals are the periodic signals got it my students and in this also in this also we can keep that any one of the signal is a complex signal also either it is a x2 or you can keep the x1 either you can take here the x2 is convolution not the convolution conjugate and x1 is a conjugate even though the resultant value is the same one signal is a normal signal another signal is a delayed version of the signal then we can scan the parameter of the tau and we can measure of the similarity between those signals okay the first you can see the cross correlation what i wrote here it is a cross correlation only one and two is a different signals the cross correlation between the two different waveforms or signals is a measure of similarity or match or relatedness or coherence whatever it is the same similarity or the match or relatedness or the coherence between the one signal and the time delayed version of the other signal one signal and time delayed or one signal with the time advanced function or one signal with the time delayed whatever it is this means the cross correlation between the two signals indicates how much one signal is related to the time delayed version of the other signal consider the two general complex signals x1 and x2 for the finite energy the cross correlation of the two energy signals is denoted as r12 of tau is given as x1 of t x2 star of t minus tau dt it is also equal to integral minus infinite infinite x1 of t plus tau x2 star of t dt is both the complex functions uh, and now if it is a real term if the two signals x1 of t x2 of t are the real then r12 of tau is equal to without the complex function here x1 of t and x2 of t minus tau dt and the second function without the complex x1 of t plus tau x2 of t dt if x1 and x2 have same similarities then the cross correlation r12 of tau will have some finite value over the range of uh, tau okay also if the integral minus infinite infinite x1 and x conjugate dt is equal to 0 or 1 to of 0 is equal to 0 then these two signals are called as orthogonal signals means there is no any similarities orthogonal means there is no any similarities between the two signals got it my dear students there is no any similarities between the two signals okay next another form of cross correlation between x1 and x2 and x1 is defined as uh, integral minus infinite infinite x2 of t and x1 of t minus c this is a function i wrote here any one of the function is a complex you can take any complex function x2 here take the complex here x2 of t and x1 of t minus tau dt okay and another one is also see in the above equations the cross correlation function r1 of tau is a function of variable tau the variable tau is called delayed parameter or scanning parameter or switching parameter always we are default saying that is a delay parameter okay it is a time delay or time shift of one of the two signals uh, the delay parameter tau determines the correlation between of the two signals 
the two signals uh, with the cross correlation at tau is equal to zero, at tau is equal to zero, can have a significant cross correlation, correlation by adjusting the parameter. The two signals for which the cross correlation is zero for all the values of tau are called as uncorrelated or incoherent signals. Incoherent signals or nothing but these are orthogonal signals. Is a zero and our can get the x1 and x2 of t minus tau is equal to zero. There is no any similarities, we can call it as a uncorrelated or otherwise we can also call it as orthogonal. Let us see the properties of cross correlation function for energy signals. Properties of cross correlation functions for energy signals. The first one is the cross correlation exhibits a conjugate symmetry. Conjugate symmetry. R12 of tau is equal to R21 star of minus tau. Okay, when these two are equal, R12 and 2 and com 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 commutative property means uh, we can change it to change the positions R12 of tau and R21 of tau is not equal here in the correlation. When these two are equal, whenever you can uh, change the sine function, the 2 1 of minus tau, or it is a complex also, R12 of tau is equal to R21 conjugate of minus tau. That is, unlike convolution, cross correlation is not a general commutative. General commutative. Let us see the R12 of tau is equal to integral minus infinite infinite x1 of t x2 of uh, t minus tau dt okay now i am interchanging the functions r21 of tau is equal to integral minus infinite to infinite and you can take the star also x2 of t x1 of t minus tau dt whole star nothing but is a conjugate of function it also replace the minus tau so r here is the conjugate R21 conjugate of tau minus tau is equal to integral minus infinite infinite. In suppose we can take here the internally, any one is a complex function. Let us take the complex function of these two. Now the multiplying the conjugate, it becomes x2 of t and x1 conjugate of t minus of minus it becomes a plus dt the both are the equal advanced function and here the delayed function we get then only you can both are equal otherwise uh, when we can change the uh, one to two to the two one it is not equal when the tau is equal to tau when the tau is equal to minus tau the interchange is value is only the equal what minus plus and var 1 to of 0 is equal to 0, if both the complex functions is a 0, then the two signals are said to be orthogonal for the entire interval. We know this, uh, in the first unit itself, we know the x1 of t with the x2 conjugate of t dt is equal to 0, both, both the signals are orthogonal. And crass correlation of two energy signals correspond to the multiplication of the Fourier transformation. Is R12 of tau, the Fourier transformation is uh, product only, but that product uh, one is a real function, other one is a conjugate function. Got it, my dear students? These are the three properties uh, of cross correlation for energy signals, the periodic signals, or cross correlation for the power signals, something but the periodic signals. 
the periodic signal so that t is 1 by t whenever you can represent the t means it's a periodic signal so only with the period of t the cross correlation function r1 to of tau for two periodic signals uh, one is x1 and x2 of t may be defined with the help of average of the correlation if the two periodic signals uh, x1 and x2 have same time period t the formula is a 1 by 2 the integral minus t by 2 the t by 2 x1 of t and x2 star of t minus t dt then the two signals x1 and x2 are called orthogonal signal that is a cross correlation for orthogonal is a zero okay another form the cross correlation x1 and x2 is defined as r21 of tau is equal to r21 of tau is equal to integral minus infinite infinite x1 and changing as x2 and x2 is changing as x1 x2 x1 star of t minus tau dt <laughs> now you can see the properties of cross correlation function for the power signals see when these two signals are orthogonal the cross correlation of energy signals are three properties and cross correlation for the periodic signals are x1 and x2 are both are orthogonal that is a cross correlation of orthogonal signal another form is r21 of tau is equal to this is a equation for the correlation function that to cross correlation function therefore equation the cross correlation function r12 of tau is a function of the variable tau only is uncorrelated and correlated already we discussed that one okay the cross correlation of two periodic functions defined another form r21 is a 1 by 2 the integral minus t by the t by t. x1 and x2 here and changes us x2 and x1 okay So we'll see the periodic functions. The first one is a Fourier transformation of cross correlation of two signals is equal to the multiplication of Fourier transformation as usual. R one to of tau is x one of omega and x two star of omega, and R one to of zero is equal to zero becomes of orthogonal. Then the signals are said to be the orthogonal over the entire time interval. And in this power signal also. R one two of tau is equal to R two one conjugate of minus tau only, not the plus tau. Unlike the convolution, the cross correlation is not commutative. Cross correlation is not commutative. Let us see that is a proof. R one two of tau is equal to R two one star of minus tau. The cross correlation exhibits conjugate symmetry. Let you take the R one two of tau. The formula: one signal is a delayed, and another signal is a normal signal. Let I am taking the x one of t, x two of t minus tau dt, and one is a conjugate of. Okay. Let t is equal to. T is equal to here. Taking that, uh, let T is equal to tau and tau is equal to n in the above equation. So for our convenience, for our convenience, I am changing the values as uh, T as n. Now R one two of tau is equal to integral minus infinite to infinite x one of uh, The t minus tau is equal to. Let us see here. T minus tau is equal to n. When the t is equal to n plus tau, and x two star of t minus tau, we assume the n. And dt is t is equal to dt is equal to dn. Apply the derivative here. The dt tau is a constant, dn. 
and this is a let t is equal to t minus tau and r 1 to of tau is equal to integral minus infinite infinite we have one is a complex uh, another one is a normal function now we got the advanced function again x1 of uh, n plus tau and x2 star of n with the dn another function we can assume here x2 of t and x1 star of uh, t minus tau dt. What I am assuming the x1 t and x2 star. Now change is x1 as x2 here and changing that x2 as x1. Okay. Now replace t is equal to n. t is equal to n. So r 1 2 of uh, not the 1 2 2 1 minus 2 1 of tau 2 1 of tau is equal to integral minus infinite infinite x2 of n and x1 star of n minus tau dn. Okay. Now replace the 2 1 star, the conjugate for the both sides are 2 1 of tau is equal to the conjugate also and change the minus tau here integral minus infinite to infinite x2 of n x star of our conjugate of n minus of minus tau into dn whole conjugate because in this function whatever we have here in this function i am replacing tau as minus tau and taking the conjugate whole. So integral minus infinite infinite x2 of n with this conjugate becomes x2 conjugate of n. Conjugate of conjugate is only the real term. n minus of minus is a plus n plus tau dn. So r21 of minus tau conjugate, we got this expression. Already we know r12 of tau is equal to the same function of x1 of n plus tau and x2 conjugate of n and the dn. Means in the left hand side, the r12 of tau here. And in this equation, the right left hand side, let us take this a two equation. And this one is of one equation from one and two. Left hand side r12 of tau is equal to here in the left hand side r. 2 1 of minus tau whole conjugate. Okay. Unlike the convolution, the population is not a commutative. Understood, my dear students. So we got the R12 of tau is equal to R21 star of minus tau. Got it, my dear students.